And you're very welcome back to Parnell Park for the fourth and final quarter final in the Go Ahead Dublin Senior Football Championships of 2023. Well, Chemical Croaks, Ballyboden, St. Enders, and St. Jude's are already through to the semi finals, but who will join them? Will it be Rohini or will it be St. Vincent's? Time will tell. We're going to go straight into team news. And as we can see, those ominous storm clouds up above, as we see Gary McCormack, our referee, about to throw up uh, the, uh, the coin to see who plays in what direction. Interestingly enough, the wind has changed as well since our, our previous quarterfinal. It is a much stronger breeze out there now as we look at the St. Vincent's lineup. Plenty of experience there from 1 to 15, and in particular, wearing the number 15 jersey here this afternoon. Mossy Quinn, former Dublin great, still applying his trade with St. Vincent's in the Senior Football Championship, and isn't that great to see? We have seen one change, though, to the starting 15 that was announced during the week, and Nathan Mullins doesn't start this afternoon. His place has been taken by Josh Kelly, and uh, we'll see now in a couple of moments what way both these sides will line up. Uh, to Rahini's starting 15, again, no changes uh, so far that we are aware of to their starting 15, but there is one change in terms of numbers on the bench. Liam Fahey will wear number 33 this afternoon, and uh, as I said, outside of that, it is the 15 that was announced during the week. Uh, there is a slight suspicion that there may be a change or two in terms of the personnel that do line out. But as we have it, that's the news from the Rohini side, obviously with a couple of massive inter-county players in the mix there. None more so than Brian Fenton wearing the number eight jersey. We can see him in the middle of their huddle there offering words of wisdom to the players around him. Let's have a look at the paths to this stage and the quarterfinals of the D Dublin Senior Football Championship. Group three, we can see there Rahini, who came out of the same group as Kula. Kula came through, obviously, on the head-to-head -head with Thomas Davis, but uh, Rahini had a really good round one win against Kula. Then lost by a point to Thomas Davis, and what a performance they had in the last round against Lucan. For their part then, St. Vincent's, uh, they, came, uh, they came out of the group that also included St. Jude's, and we see there a draw, first time out against Whitehall. They then went, uh, lost to St. Jude's, uh, but finally, what a performance last day out against Nafina, a hotly fancied Nafina side as well. So that's how it played out for them in Group 4 to uh, ensure their place in the quarterfinals of this year's championship. Before we get the action underway, we will have a moment's silence uh, in memory of the late Damien Tobin, brother of one of the uh, key stewards here in Parnell Park, Paul Tobin. And uh, Paul and indeed the whole Tobin family are very much in our thoughts here today. impeccably observed minute silence there as you'd expect in memory of the late Damien Tobin and again the Tobin family and indeed one of our dear friends here in Parnell Park on so many match days Paul Tobin one of the lead stewards here we're very much thinking of Paul and his family here this afternoon yeah, With just me sorry for cutting across sorry. you Marcus I'm just looking at Rohini there. It looks like Liam Fahey, you mentioned, wearing 33 is starting, along with uh, Patrick Reid, who's wearing 25, or Paddy Reid. Sorry for cutting across you, so you're right. A couple of changes to personnel. They were yeah, keeping that secret from you. Well, they were and they weren't. You know, when a fella looks at you and he says, yeah, we've no changes, but you know the way he says it, that he, the, he does have changes. So, And, uh, a, and <laughs> a third one, Sean Grenham, is, looks like he's drifted inside as well. So probably inside line, Sean Grenham, uh, Patrick Reid, unless Grenham stays out on the 40, which he looks like he might actually. Okay, so three changes, good and early for Rahini there, as Coleman said. Liam Fahey wearing 33, Paddy Reid wearing 25, and Sean Grenham wearing 26. All start for Rahini. Rahini, who will play from left to right in the first game here this afternoon. That breeze was playing from left left to right but just walking the pitch earlier Coleman the breeze is after picking up and it's it's kind of a swirling breeze now and it's kind of nearly coming from that uh, uh, right hand corner and um, from the Crave Kieran clubhouse and nearly into the bottom corner here yeah and I'm actually raising a cut across you there because I was waiting for your intro as I was hoping for a big <laughs> lead in but anyway I'm after cutting myself off there <laughs> yeah certainly th the breeze seems to be blown across or swirling as you rightly said I'm not sure it'll have a significant impact the game before this uh, between Kula and uh, St. Jude's very high scoring, so hopefully we'll see something similar here in the second of the go-ahead Dublin quarterfinals. As I mentioned earlier as well, the only 
change that we're aware of for St. Vincent's is the late change. Josh Kelly wearing 18. He starts in place of Nathan Mullins for St. Vincent's. And uh, here in possession of the ball. Good and early is number 33, Liam Fahey. An issue with the number 23 jersey, I believe. Yeah, Hence why he's wearing 33. I'd say it slipped into someone's gear bag <laughs> and never made its way back out again. <laughs> never happened in your day, Coleman, <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, now, Rahini, early possession for them. Again, as mentioned earlier, Croaks, Ballyboden and St. Jude's already into the uh, semi-final of the go-ahead Dublin Senior Football Championships. And we will have that draw after this game. It's an open draw, so again, any of the sides can... Uh, play against each other in that semi-final and we will have the draw for the Senior 2 and the Senior 1 semi-final championships uh, soon after this game concludes. A uh, silly free given away by Adrian Cummins, I think it was. Uh, Patrick Reid looked like the ball had shot over his head, he'd missed it, but he got a little tug as he was trying to turn and recover for it. So, First opportunity for Kean Ivers. Brilliant, the last day out against Lucan with a hat-trick of goals. You can just see the breeze, the way it's blown across his jersey and stuff that it seems to be blown into his face, all right. And Ivers hits that and hits that with a plum. That's a lovely start for Rahini. Only a minute gone on the clock and that's the first score for Ivers. Yeah, great score, backed himself. Breeze blown into his face, but uh, kicks a nice score and they're after winning the kick out too. Outside of the right peg. And uh, I think that was Rudderson real. The left half back with that effort outside of the right foot. And it's the first wide of the afternoon and it's uh, first wide to Rahini. Yeah, after picking up the kick, I think that probably should have been looking to feed it inside to one of the inside line. Took on the opportunity himself and puts a poor wide. Vincent's build. Albert Martin with the hand pass to Gavin Burke, Vincent's captain. Long ball into space for Sean Lowry, but uh, too ambitious a pass and again, just seeing again something that we saw in the first game as well. Even though we've had very little rain here this afternoon, just that ball skids. If it's not a perfect ball into space that bounces into the space, if it's going to be skidding off that surface, it's just going to skid and go out. Yeah, and it was just a light shower here, probably about a quarter to four, you know, which uh, added to the, the greasiness of the surface anyway, hence why all the lads are wearing gloves. So while it's warm, it's wet on the surface there. So handling is going to be important. Rahini looking to build. Sean McCarthy. John Grenham out the field as Coleman was speculating before the game. And good early touch for Paddy Reid as well. Back out here towards Fahey. Darren Lunny takes the offensive mark there. And Lunny looks like he'll compose himself and go for a score here. Andy Smith in goal for Vincent's, directing play and around him, and that falls in around his goal, and he puts a fist to that, and it's going to break out here, and, well, falling, and that's a poor effort from Paddy Reid, really, and he may have picked up an injury in the process, but uh, second wide for Rahini is a net result. Yeah, did the first one come off the, the upright or the crossbar? I think it was Sorry, a yeah. fist from fist. Smith, I think, in, in goal for Vincent's. Yeah, well, lucky, maybe Patrick Reid should have got something out of the... The half chance that fell his way, turned on to his right, three Vincent's fella putting him under pressure, so difficult for him. Dara Cummins motoring well from centre half back there. Back out here to the captain, Gavin Burke. Again, Vincent's just building. Now a bit of pace into proceedings. Oh, that's <laughs> lovely ingenuity there and play. And in the end, that one goes wide. But that was lovely from Sean Lamb. Pop over the shoulder. Bounce was able to regather possession. But in the end, it's a wide. And first wide of the afternoon for St. Vincent's. Yeah, offers great pace. Brilliant kick out there from uh, Rob Henley to pick out one of his own. But he offers huge pace, Lamb, on that side of the field. You know, got in behind. But unlucky not to get something out of the move he did. As a defender, you won't be happy with the ball being hand-passed over your head and recollected. But they'll be on alert now. Well, Sean Lamb got a goal the last day out in that win. A brilliant win against Nafina. Again, Nafina, who reached last year's championship final against Chemical Croaks, and people would have expected them to build on that performance and that and the success of last year's campaign. But unfortunately for Nafina, the team from the Movi Road just weren't able to build on it this year. And a brilliant win for St. Vincent's by 116 to 18 points in that final game of the group stages. 
Really good play here from Rohini fullback Sean McMahon. McLaughlin, Alan McLaughlin, and in around the Vincent's goal. But in the end, nice and tidy from Adrian Cummins, the Vincent's fullback. Yeah, good start for Rohini. Probably should have more on the scoreboard given the, the possession they've had. Tomas Quinn. Ben McHugh keeping a close eye on him, knowing full well that uh, Quinn favours that right foot. Here comes his captain, Burke. Burke with advantage. Burke steadies himself and launches that one, and that's a lovely score which the referee will give. He was playing advantage, but Vincent's are level after five minutes. Yeah, brilliant score. Love the dummy bounce where he came inside. Looks like the referee's going to have a word. Gary McCormick with... Uh, Michael Conker, maybe it's the two guys that are getting uh, speaking to. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Just on Ben McHugh, on Tomas Quinn, he's shadowing him and keeping him on the outside. He probably needs to look and get hands on him, put a little bit more pressure on him. He's too elusive to allow him look up and find space. That time he picked out Gavin Burke, but the dummy bounce from Burke to knock it over the bar. Great score for Vincent's. Off and running. Here is Rob Henley, Mayo goalkeeper. Again, watching him before the game and just taking 45s and freeze from a little further out as part of the warm-up and just slotting them over with ease. McHugh comes back in field. Here's Fenton. Looks inside. Ivers. He's got an advantage here if he chooses to take it and uh, he will come back for that free now. Taken quickly. Fenton with his left. Shook his head. Lowry. Bends and does really well there. There's an opportunity here. But that's on a half block. And that's going to break in around the square. And in the end, Rob Henley. Just gets it away. I think that bounce caught everyone by surprise. Yeah, obviously looking to try and tag on the score, but dropped it short. But uh, I think everyone was surprised that it came as short as it did. And easy for Robbie, Rob Henley to come away with it then on the back end of the effort. Very cagey opening 10 minutes. You know, both teams trying to suss each other out. Rahini knocked up a huge score against Lucan in their last group game. You mentioned Vincent's result against Nafina. So I think. Probably both teams are just trying to suss each other out to see actually how good or where the weaknesses might be. I'm sure there's been work done, video work between then and now. Very cagey opening 10 minutes. Sean McCarthy for Rahini. Looks up and now uh, that's a really good block there from Shane O'Leary. He was the hero the last day, scored that point against Nafina, the very last kick of the game. Paddy Reid. Comes short for that line out, he might, or that uh, line ball, he might get it back. Yeah, too soft. He was looking for a free there that wasn't coming his way. He went to ground too easy. Gary McCormick was never going to give that one. Kian done very deep here for St. Vincent's. He's now trotting his way on the far side of the pitch. As we look here at Darren Byrne, who'll pull the ball back. Gavin Burke. And uh, that's two or three balls that Vincent's are after putting out over the far sideline. Trying to keep it nice and wide, but just not having the accuracy in that final pass. Yeah, there's a big prize enough for, you know, a, a go ahead Dublin senior football semi final spot. So both teams, uh, you've mentioned already the KG opening. You know, Rahini coming into this, given the results, given the, the players that they have on board, are, there's probably expectation on them to go and win the game. Vincent's obviously have this huge pedigree in Dublin senior football. And while maybe the team is different and newer to what it was in previous years, they're not easily bet and they see an opportunity themselves for a semi-final spot. So I think both teams are probably more apprehensive rather than as free-throwing as the game we had before this between Jude's and Kula. A foul there on Sean Grenham. And back will come for that free. And it's important to remember too, like Coleman is dead right. Vincent's a team with great tradition and history but you know to reach a quarter final after promotion from senior two last year I mean th this is progress already uh, in that first year back in senior one but of course they would love to go a step further and reach that last four 
Sean McCarthy assesses his options. Fenton, a lovely little turn there. Just slips away from Josh Kelly. He has a bit of space now, finds the left, and that's a lovely score from Fenton. A really nice finish, but it was just about how he created that space for himself and just to drift away from Josh Kelly. Yeah, and how he took the additional bounce just to set himself before he knocked Patrick Reed over as well and tagging on the score. But the spin, the pirouette to get away, the time he created for himself and the score, we've seen it so many times in a blue jersey. Nice from a Rahini perspective to see it in the maroon, and he tags on a score, puts them up by one. Mac Vincent's come again. Now a bit of space in front of Michael Concar. They look for the run from Dunn. Liam Dunn just looking to stand Liam Fahey up there, but Sean McMahon comes to his aid as well. And in the end, just... Just the ball just being that little bit loose, and as Coleman was talking about earlier, just players not settled <sighs> again. Another perfect example there of just the players not being quite set and settled. Oh, and that's definitely a foul. Well, no question about it. I think it was Sean Lowry who was making his way in, and Sean McCarthy, was it? Yeah, but what, what work in the corner, uh, you know, you force a turnover, Fenton picks it up, pops it out. Just a loose pass coming out. Not quite sure who gives it away. Oh, it's awful, doesn't beat him. It's interesting, Vincent's are working on this exact move in their warm-up, trying to create space inside. Tomas Quinn was looking for the pass, didn't come to him. Orchestrates the penalty kick. Well, there's still some discussion out there. And Gary McCormick, our referee, just trying to make sure that all the players stay behind, stay outside that D. Tomas Quinn against Rob Henley, former dub star against former Mayo star. Breeze is definitely picking up here in Parnell Park. 12 minutes gone. Two points to one. Rahini lead. And, and again, even that ball just blowing across and moving the size 5 O'Neill off the spot. So Tomas Quinn will place again. Quinn against Henley. Henley making himself big. Not quite as big as Bruce Grobler once did. And that is well dispatched by Mossy Quinn. It's 1-1 to Vincent's. They're ahead for the first time in the game. Yeah, cool as ice. Picked his corner. Sent Henley the wrong direction. Big deep breath before he makes a move towards the ball, but tucked it away nicely. Just goes to show you, when you turn over the ball, the punishment that can come on the back end of it, that time, clinical penalty chance created. Massey Quinn scores it. And they've done so much so well to, to win the turnover. And then to create the space, they had two players that were unmarked. And again, it's just a sloppy kick pass that's intercepted. And then Sean Lowry just racing onto it. And I suppose there was no question but that Sean McCarthy had come across and did foul. Vincent's again looking to build. Mm -hmm. Ian Dunn. Sean Lamb. Moss Quinn. Quinn with the right. And that's a wide. Second wide of the afternoon for Vincent. Yeah, bought himself a bit of space, but definitely pulled at the wrong side of the goal. You're right about the, the breeze. There's certainly an impact blown down to that church end in this opening half. It'd be difficult for Rahini to get out. A much earlier press from both teams and not allowing teams to build. They're hitting them early, meeting them on the 45 meter line, trying to make them play the ball. Hugh does well, and he was under pressure there. And Tomas Quinn left his mark there on Darren Byrne. Angled ball in there and trying to find Alan McLaughlin. And he's not happy with that decision by uh, the linesman, but I, I don't know what he's... I think uh, it's not so much the si linesman decision. He actually slid into the ball there without making any contact. So there's a slight tackle that he's probably annoyed about rather than the ball actually going over the side. And I think that's probably the point he was making. There was no attempt to play the ball when he slid across. And obviously, you know, referee decided there was nothing in it. Linesman made the right call on the, the decision. But I think that's probably what has him, has him annoyed more so than the line ball being given against him. Well, for his troubles, he goes into Gary McCormick's book. 
That's the first yellow card of the afternoon. Yeah, and a soft one really to pick up. I know he'd be frustrated, but they're never going to change their mind. Well, not very often at least. Dara Cummins. Sean Grenham does well to stick with him from Rahini. Puts that pass, pass back inside to Sean Lambo. That was really well read by Glenn McNamara. Fenton. Builds forward for Rahini. Has help on his outside from McCarthy. And again, just seems to be a lot of chatting to the ref going on, a lot of... And indeed, yeah, he's... <laughs> and yeah, I think he's doing an impression <laughs> of a puppet there. <laughs> yeah, there seems to be a lot of back chat. He's after just addressing it there, so he said, any more, you're going into the book. So it's fairly clear now what's going on. But it's even like the players nearly go into slow motion. They're expecting the whistle. When it's not coming, then they're looking at the referee. Whereas Gary McCormick, to his credit, I think he's trying to let the play go as much as possible, and then, if needs be, obviously, to blow the whistle. Uh, I've been here for a couple of the group games with uh, Rahini, and I've watched Rob Henley kick at 45s. I'm not trying to put the mockers on him, but even just watch the technique. It's so fluid in terms of what he's trying to achieve. He's a long time kicking dead balls, but a lovely style in terms of how he kicks. We're not sure whether well it was over. <laughs> no, I think that I was over, lovely. to be fair. <laughs> I thought I was after making a complete Egypt of himself there. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time, <laughs> and it won't be the last. But anyway, we'll let you away with that one. Well struck, well taken. That style is very good. I mentioned, you know, when you, you don't force it, the technique allows the, the score generally to come. And Henley is so experienced. Drills one over. Nice response to the goal that we conceded a couple of minutes ago. One point game. Kind on nice and strong just to hold off the tackle and then launches that one and that is a brilliant score. Score the game from Kian Dunn. He was so good the last day for St. Vincent's from play and from place balls and he's uh, up and running here this afternoon. Yeah, he's very talented. I've seen him in one of the earlier group games. He had four shots of goals probably in the opening half and missed all four. Young guy sometimes can drift out of the game on the back of that, but he stuck at it and gave a master class then after that because he backed himself to go again with scores. So that's a brilliant score, but well within his limits, his range in terms of what he's able to kick. You know, good start for Vincent in terms of the contribution from their, their forwards in the opening 16, 17 minutes. Back they'll come here. Rahini to goalkeeper Rob Henley. He's got help outside him from McNamara if he so chooses. Instead, he goes to Brian Fenton, who will now choose to pass to Glenn McNamara. McNamara looks inside. All the players inside are man-marked. Fenton will get it back again. A point already this afternoon with his left foot. He takes on Kelly. Josh Kelly stuck with him, to be fair to him, and got a bit of an extra dig out there from the Vincent's fullback at Adrian Cummins as well. Yeah, Fenton can see gaps. He's, he's happy to take on the opportunities there. He's unlucky not to get more behind that, but he can see when he's, you know, what's in front of him and he's happy to take it on. It's a, it's a good omen for Rahini. He sometimes comes back and checks, but, you know, so often, or twice at least today, he's seen that gap and pushed on ahead into it. Chances will come if he keeps doing it. Sean Lowry, the Vincent's full forward is below us here and he'll now get the ball and he's on his way. Did really well just to realize that he was under pressure and he needed the dig out. Here comes Dunn. He's got one off his left. Steadies himself and will come back for the advantage. Yeah, a little tug on the jersey or on the arm, I think. Referee made the right call and allowing the advantage. The pace that, that Vincent's can inject there. Dara Cummins from centre back where Lowry is coming deep, coming onto the ball. It, you know, that's where they're creating that little bit of momentum and go forward movement. Good opportunity for Dunn off the deck here. He's also... As he's shown, very well capable. And nine points he got against Nafina the last day out. Six from freeze. Another three from play. Settles himself. One from play already with the Kitog. This one he'll hit with the right. Almost with his back to goal. As he settles and as he shoots. And he'll try to bring this one around, but it just stayed out. And again, just both free takers and I suppose... Just players in general, just trying to judge that breeze at the moment. And I suppose Kean will have his range now and he'll understand what he needs to do. And Rob maybe got away with, with one there. And Mossy Quinn, he had a chance for a goal, definitely. 
And he certainly could have taken his own point there. He probably tried to overcomplicate it. Yeah, I think he was in two minds uh, whether he should have taken it on himself or give the pass. Oh, the awful kick out from Henley. I'm not quite sure. Well, Red ran through the D. Was there a chance there to pull the trigger? I think he probably thought it was. And I, I imagine knows himself he probably should have gone for it. Foul definitely on Fenton, and that was a late one. Into the back, he'll definitely feel that one in the morning. Craig Wilson, I think, just came in late there, and Gary McCormick is looking to have a quick chat with him, I think. Notebook is out again. Happy with a tick, though. Fenton in the wars so far, but very effective when he's been on the ball, and as you said, Coleman more than happy to drive forward and bring that... I suppose, inter-county form with them into the club scene. And that's what's brilliant when lads come off the inter-county scene and they have the bit of pep in their step and seeing those performances then for their clubs. Yeah, and I th uh, you know, th there's obviously an argument about the split season and, you know, whether it's right or wrong. You know, uh, personally, I'd love to see the inter-county season run a little bit. But that said, the vast majority of our players play in the club championships. For the Rohini guys to have the likes of, you know, Fenton Howard, who's unfortunately injured, with them for this length of time, allows them to get better and develop as a team. And that's why you get teams getting to this stage of quarterfinals, because they have a consistency in what they're in what they're trying to do. And that consistency again from Henley off from a dead ball. Well, that's his second of the afternoon, second in a row for Rohini. And uh, the gap is back down to one. That time from a free for Rob Henley. And here comes Rohini with a chance maybe to get another score. And that's a free against Michael Concar, the Vincent's cornerback, and uh, Rohini will have an opportunity definitely here to draw level. Yeah, and again, we spoke about kickouts and possession. Seeing at the other end, Rob Henley giving the ball away, creates a half goal scoring opportunity for Tomas Quinn. The penalty came out of a dispossession or a bad turnover from the other end. And similarly, when Vincent's don't get the kick out right there, Rohini put a push on, they win a free. Huge pressure on the kickouts and on goalkeepers now. It's so much more than just standing between the posts and hoping you get a save. You have to be able to play football, get the kickouts away, save, and also communicate across the field. So it's an important role for each team to have somebody solid between the six. Five points for Rohini so far. Only one of those from play. A left-footed effort from Brian Fenton after 10 minutes. That's Darren Lunny's first score of the afternoon. Really well taken. Kick his left, but... Uh, for a man of his calibre, relatively straightforward. That's a double hop from Fenton, but I think, uh, well, he definitely got away with it. Rohini on the offensive through Sean McMahon, their fullback. This will come back here towards Grenham. It's McCarthy. Only has a right, lads. And the, uh, the four Vincent's players just made their way towards Paddy Reid and made sure he had no space to get his right peg away. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the free was given because he'd only just one possession. Did he give it for charging into them or was it a, an overplay of the ball? I'm not quite sure. Either way, Vincent's come away with it. <laughs> 23 minutes played here in the first half of the fourth and final quarter final in the go-ahead Dublin Senior Football Championships. Chemical Croaks, Ballyboden, St. Enders and St. Jude's already through to the last four. Who will join them? And these two sides played in the league in April. Only a point between them. Vincent's coming out on top 2-7 to 2-6. And it's been a very even affair so far here in Parnell Park. Sean Lamb demanding the ball and gets it. In towards Quinn. I don't think that was the plan to get it back towards Lamb, but he has it. Mossy Quinn, lovely little pass over the head. There's an effort here on a score. And that's taken. First score of the afternoon for Vincent's full forward, Sean Lowry. Yeah, did well. Brilliant pass from Tomas Quinn just to let him inside the two defenders. But there was the clash out the field between was it, uh, Talty and uh, Ben McHugh, maybe, who's still on the ground there. Uh, that created a little bit of space. So they went in hard for the ball, but once they took each other out of the game, unfortunately, from a Rohini perspective. But a nice little pass inside to Lowry to give him his first run play. Yeah, Talty is still down, as is McHugh. And uh, both backroom teams just checking on both players, just making sure everything is all right. And just while we have a little bit of a break and play, a reminder of the Go Ahead Dublin GA Club Awards, which were announced during the week, and uh, which recognises the work of the clubs, our officials within clubs, volunteers, players, on and off the pitch, and those contributions 
Uh, we're now looking for nominations on dublinga.ie and your entries need to be in by the 12th of November for those GA Club Awards. So best of luck to all involved and as I said, a couple of weeks to get those nominations in. McCormick again, our referee with the whistle. Yeah, Brian Fenton pulled back when he was trying to win the ball. So free, rightly given, and then slowed down. So they hence the 10 metres. That could still work out, and it does. Nice hand pass there from Brian Talty to Grenham. Back here again towards Lonnie. Lonnie with the left. And again, he was pretty happy as soon as he struck it, but... Again, with that breeze, I think it's just playing havoc with those efforts that are just coming up short. Oh, definitely. Very evident there that the breeze held it up and it dropped straight into Vincent's goalkeeper, Andy Smith's hands, and was an easy clearance for him. So, no, Raheem to be happy enough. They've, you know, fell behind to the goal, but have managed to respond a couple of times to it. Scores at a premium. I don't think we're going to open up at any stage. So, Raheem will be happy with where they're going. Vincent's likewise. Josh Kelly. Wins his free. And the three Rohini players he had for company, not a bit happy with that. Yeah, not so sure either. I thought they did very well. They, they were playing the ball. They didn't allow him break free. Gary McCormack deemed differently. He thought they were pulling at his arms to win a free. Bit of a chat between linesman and referee, so they might be looking for somebody to have a word. But, but no, I think Vincent's probably fortunate to get the free. Yeah, Gary McCormack, is he going looking for somebody? The instruction from the sideline was very clear to Kean Dunn there, keep it simple, and that's what he did. He just went back to the free man, and now he puts a long ball in towards Tomas Quinn, and Ben McHugh got a fist to that, and that'll be a 45. Yeah, I'm not sure there was much direction in the pass. I think it was just a hit and hope, but you know, it's after leading to a, a 45. Tomas Quinn probably come out and have a look at this, if it, or maybe leave it to Dunn to have a, a go at it. Kean certainly fancies his chances. Game is very broken. It's, you know, there's a lot of stop start. There's no real momentum has come into the game. Probably suits both teams and that it's not allowing either one to get a run on the other. But from a spectator point of view, quite tactical, quite slow. And yet we've seen when they want it, they can certainly inject pace. There's plenty of pace on both sides. But uh, not much of that in evidence in the opening. 27 or so minutes. Key and done now. Left shoulder to the posts. Strikes this with his right. And that starts out way right and stays out on the right hand side. Four wides to Vincent's in the opening 27, 28 minutes here in Parnell Park. Yeah, and you know, you may be back one of those or a couple of those for scores that they haven't managed to get. Just leaving the door open for Rahini because they're not building out in that lead or building up in the back of the goal. I mentioned Dunn, it won't won't bother him. He's put too wide. I know they've you know their chances they've gone wide. It won't bother him. He's a great mentality. He'll go again and surely create more chances for himself. Brian Fenton taking on the whole of the St. Vincent's midfield and their core. And yeah, again he's fouled. Yeah, a free there, and wouldn't be surprised if there's a card given here because he'd given the ball away. There was a late hit on him. I mentioned what he's trying to do is he's spotting gaps and he's charging into those gaps and as a consequence he's drawn fouls on him and that was a particularly late foul now the lamb might avoid the book but it looks like referee gary mccormick is going to have a word with him gives rob henley a chance he's hit two from a similar distance and it does look like we'll have our second yellow of the afternoon Still deep in conversation with Sean Lamb, and there is the first yellow card of the afternoon for St. Vincent's. One already for Rahini's Alan McLaughlin. And we have another conversation here now, this time with Darren Byrne. Rahini right half back as uh, Rob Henley settles himself, finds a spot on the sod that he's comfortable with. He's already struck too beautifully, as Coleman has already alluded to. And he'll settle himself again. I think you might have just said to Darren Byrne, there's still a bit of backtrack going on. It needs to stop. I'm not having it anymore. Henley strikes this with the right. 
and that stayed inside the post and that is brilliant they may have only gotten one from play Coleman but the five that they've gotten from place balls have been all expertly hit yeah well that's a brilliant score you know a hat trick a freeze turnover and a kick out here come Rahini pass inside and eventually with the left and that is just slipped over the bar and beautifully done as well really nice play from Lunny that's his second of the afternoon yeah two on the spin I think Michael Concar maybe who's still on the ground there might have picked up a knock in the move but again the kick out gets turned over the punishment comes in the shape of a uh, play uh, a score from a play from Lunny you know great response from Rahini to the goal that came after 13 minutes they've hit five against Vincent's two in that period of time I know you've mentioned they're from place balls, but if you're conceding freeze, the punishment is coming in the shape of Henley. So it's good enough from a Rahini point of view, and they'd be delighted with how this first half has played out despite the concession of that goal. Yeah, Brian Fenton with one off his left after 10 minutes, and Darren Lunny, their full forward with that score to put them a point clear as we uh, head towards the break. And still a bit of concern there for the Vincent's management team. Tony Dunn looking over and just wanting to make sure that everything is all well with his fullback. He's looking up towards the stands there to looking at his uh, substitutes, but uh, I want to make sure that everything is good to go. Again, Michael Conker, brilliant servant for Vincent's. Be keen to keep him on the field. Uh, looks like things are all well in his world. And Conker will continue. And that is a line ball there for St. Vincent's on the far side. Foul there on Albert Martin, who slides to the ground. Again, the rain has now started to fall in Donny Carney. So yeah, brilliant show from Albert Martin that time. There wasn't a huge amount happening on the line ball. He made a run from our near side here under the commentary area right across the field to get on possession there took Darren uh, took Darren Byrne with a run on the run as well great win I know they're still 60 plus from goal but it's you know those type of runs that are needed to try and get something set up for Vincent so again as I mentioned that rain has started to fall very heavily here in Donny Kearney as Sean Lowry tried to gather that ball it just slipped out of his grasp and uh, that is the final action of a tame enough first half but that won't matter a jot to the Rohini lads they're a point to the good they've got seven St Vincent's have won three and we're going to have a quick look now at some of those highlights from the first half here in Parnell Park yeah I think it was Ivers who got us going with a, a free and a great one at that to start the ball rolling great quick lovely bit of bounce here that gives him a bit of space Gavin Burke knocks it over the bar one apiece after six minutes and then Brian Fenton, we mentioned, brilliant turn. He's pushing into that space, takes an extra play just to create the time and space for himself. And despite taking Patrick Reid out, knocks it over the bar. But then came the goal scoring opportunity. Ball comes across, won by Rahini. Very simple, just get it out, take your time on the ball, find the right man with possession. Just allows a hand get on it. And once he wins the ball, drives towards the goal. Tomas Quinn inside him, he's looking for the pass, just about to pull the trigger, pushing the back. Sean McCarthy concedes the penalty and then what a finish into the corner sends Henley the wrong way. 30 minutes on the clock, 1-1-2 one, one to two, and the response came in the shape of the goalkeeper. Mentioned his technique, drives that one against the wind over the bar. 1-1-3, one, one to three. response comes in the shape of a score from their centre forward. Watch this for a boomer. Backs himself on his left side, sends it up into the sky to stick it over the bar. 1-2 to 3, and Vincent's were in good shape at that stage. Turned it over again. Here's the half chance for goal. Does he go? Does he not? And I think when he gave the pass, he realised he maybe should have gone himself to Moss Quinn. Henley with his second. Drops it over, 1-2 to 4. And that's then backed up by Lunny in the full forward line, and it's a draw game after 23 minutes. Tomas Quinn, lovely little pass, pops it inside to Lowry. Had them up by one again, but then a great finish to the half. Henley sticks over his third, and then they pressure on the kick out. Picked up by Lunny again when it comes inside. Knocks it over the bar, ties up the scoring. Rahini by one at half time. 
That is the uh, final action of the half. So here in Parnell Park in the fourth quarter final of the go-ahead Dublin Senior Football Championships, it's Rahini who are just ahead by the slenderest of margins at halftime. They've got seven. Vincent's have won three. We're going to take a quick break. Back with the second half.
And you're very welcome back to the uh, second half here of the fourth quarter final in the go-ahead Dublin Senior Football Championships between Rohini and St. Vincent's. Rohini with the slender lead at the start of the second half. They've got seven points. Vincent's have won three. Uh, don't forget, after this game, we will have the draw for the Senior 2 and the Senior 1 semi-finals. And that'll be live, and it will be drawn by my glamorous assistant here today, Coleman Goggins. Coleman, what's your sense of the first half that we've seen here so far between Rohini and Vincent's, and your sense of what's to come for the second half? Yeah, I think a very uh, cagey opening, opening half. Scores very much at a premium. I think probably Rohini, the better of the teams in the opening half. With wind advantage behind them now, second half, it's probably for Vincent's now, will have to carry the ball and try and, you know, create those scoring opportunities close to the goal but still very much in the melting pot I still think you know th there's big scores in Vincent if they're able to get ball into that inside line but it's you know big ass for both teams to, to dig it out with Breeze behind them Rohini have opportunity to kick from a longer distance but how many times has the wind won a game never it's about players and personnel and making the right decision so decisions critical in this second half but hopefully it opens up a little bit you know, very cagey teams probably more concerned with losing rather than winning. So maybe they just need to change perceptions a little bit or mentality and go for it. Oh, well, you could hear everyone and coming beside me just take a breath there. And uh, Brian Fenton, who's been in the wars big time in the first half, he's uh, just picking himself up gingerly off the ground there and. Again, we should be good to go here, but uh, a yellow card there, I think, being presented to Liam Fahey. And indeed it is, I think, so the th second yellow of the game to a Rohini player, Alan McLaughlin, won the first half. And uh, yeah, it was wild enough into the tackle, yeah. as we said, from Fahey. There was no regard given to anybody in the movement and almost took out his own man. I was just going to say, it didn't matter what colour the jersey was. Could still work out here for St. Vincent's, and indeed it does. And too many steps from Derek Cummins, but that was harsh enough, I felt. Yeah, he, he bought himself a bit of space. Uh, you know, maybe he had an opportunity before that. Uh, you know, it felt it was very harsh on him. It mostly took five steps. Gary McCormick was very quick to blow the whistle on it. He, he looked to settle himself, but yeah, free goes Rahini's way. Tough call. Len McNamara, left cornerback for Rahini. Should get the ball back here, but doesn't. Instead, Sean McMahon powers forward for Rahini. Brian Fenton, pass over the head there towards Talty. Fouled. Will that be led away? It will. And it's an effort on a score there, and that is a lovely score from the cutest, the tightest of angles from Darren Lunny. And that is really, really solid. Third point of the afternoon for the full forward. Yeah, great advantage given by Gary McCormick there. Big hit around the 45 metre line. Let the play run on. Lunny, Lunny picked it up, backed himself. Mentioned, if you look at the flags behind the goal, there's a significant breeze, the way they're shifting. Well taken. Josh Kelly, excellent on the kick out there from Andy Smith. And Vincent's look to counter now. Two points behind. Good pace here from Lowry. Jinx left, jinx right. And Henley, nice and comfortable under that ball. Again, Rahini just nice and patient with the build-up. Quick kick out from Rob Henley, and then they just work it through the hands. That didn't work out great for them in the first half when they lost possession and conceded the goal, but... Real with the hand pass across to McHugh. Talty on the far side, just directing proceedings and he'll get the ball here now. Sloppy though. Kean Dunn has it. Sean Lamb is looking for it and will get... Lamb gets a high hand there from Talty. My first read of that Coleman is that Sean Lamb was maybe starting to slip at the time, but still it was just sloppy from Talty and he definitely goes into McCormick's book here. Yeah, definitely goes into the book. I think it was a high hand, so he'd be deserving of going into it. I, I just think there was a, if a better pass had come there, there was a goal scoring opportunity for Lamb. The pass was a poor one, which meant he had to wait for the hop to try and collect it, which brought him away from goal. 
but Dunn, as he picked up the ball, and brilliant work from Vincent to turn over Rahini, and, and you know that's the challenge. You know, if if you're being pressured and pressured, sometimes putting boot to ball is okay rather than holding on to it. They didn't there turn it over. It gives Dunn a chance from a place ball. Again, just the game has yet to take off here. Second game of the afternoon. First game, a win for St. Jude's by a point against Kula. 2-11 to 2-10. This game's still very much there for Vincent's to go after. And as we watch now, Kean Dunn with another monster effort, but this one won't, won't go out of play. It's well retained and caught there by Tomas Quinn. Up you get, says the referee. And Quinn won't be able to do much with that ball. And in the end, it goes out for a 45. Yeah, it did brilliant to collect the ball inside. Uh, tried to come inside. There were so many Rahini bodies. It was all going to be difficult. He went to ground. Gary McCormick was having none of it, but did well to engineer winning of a 45. Had a couple of shots at goal. He's missed two from place balls. Hopefully, for a Vincent's perspective, it's third time lucky for him. But again, mention it, despite the, the breeze into your back, Vincent's are putting a press on. They're not allowing Rahini to get the ball away. Allows him down to push far higher up the field because of the fact that they're pinning Rahini back. Ian Dunn with the 45, a point in the first half, a brilliant effort with his left. And he struck that beautifully with the right. And that's his first score of the second half. First Vincent score of the second half. And the margin is back down to one. Yeah, I mentioned that, you know, the couple of misses won't put him off. Great mentality just back in his ability to drive that one over the bar back down to the narrowest of margins real press on the kick out here from Vincent's real press on but Henley still able to find Talty and Talty then just trying to release that ball good and early I'm not really sure if he was trying to find Kean Ivers or if he was trying to find Alan McLaughlin but either way it only found a Vincent's hand and here comes Lowry Lowry taking on Liam Fahey, still going and running strong. Nice little dink there from Martin, and it's taken in there under all sorts of pressure. There's that Concar who manages just to dink it back out. Here comes Sean Lamb. Burke passed across the field here towards Shane O'Leary. Got a point the last day out. Mossy Quinn. Two options outside him. Switches on, says the sideline. McCusker. Here comes Dunn again. And again, just took his eye off, but he might get a second bite of the cherry, and he does. Ben McHugh comes across. And here is a big effort from Martin. And again, the breeze holding that one up. Where's it going to break? It'll break here towards Kelly. Kelly with the left and Henley with a smart save, but just don't know if Kelly got the full boot behind that one. Seemed to have the sting taken out of it and comfortable in the end for Rob Henley. Yeah, not sure he got his full weight behind us. You rightly said it, but again, that breeze held it up, picked up the break. Great pressure from Vincent's again. Great work on the ball. They're not allowing Rahini to build. Know that they can't afford to give them space. Huge pressure on Rahini now to try and secure and move the ball forward. Brian Fenton with the line ball. And looks like we've got a uh, substitute coming on here now for Rahini. Alan McLaughlin looks like he's heading off and it'll be James O'Kane on in his place wearing the number 11. A couple of late changes before throw in for Rahini where Liam Fahey, Paddy Reid and Sean Grenham all started. And Gary McCormick, the referee, just waiting for uh, Alan McLaughlin to make his way off the field on the far side, and uh, on we go. Brian Fenton gets it back. Sean Lamb takes after him. He'll get it back again, though. He's got Kelly and Lamb for company. Buys himself a bit of space, but then gives the ball away. Advantage being played by our referee this afternoon, Gary McCormick. Jimmy McCusker. Moss Quinn now gets that ball away to Gavin Burke. Got a point in the first half. Bit of space here for Lowry, and that's a lovely score from Sean Lowry. 
his second of the afternoon and a lovely, lovely kick that just curled and curled and went straight between the post. Yeah, arguably the move of the day there for, for Vincent's pressure, significant pressure on Brian Fenton inside the Vincent's 45. They then turn the ball over, work it up the field, manage to get into a little bit of space for Lowry to knock it over the bar. But huge lift in intensity from Vincent's across this second half. I know it's not pretty. I know it's not as free-flowing as maybe we'd like from a, a, a neutral pers perspective. But in terms of the intensity and the ratcheting it up, you know, really significant. That's inside their own 45 where they turn it over. They're being told to carry the ball into space. Tomas Quinn comes across, then cuts the line to try and create something inside. Gavin Burke comes on to the move. And then there's a lovely pass inside off a left-handed hand pass that frees it up for Lowry to knock it over the bar. Game is tied up again. I see a substitute on for St. Vincent's there as well. Looks like number 17, Caleb O'Brien, is on. And uh, he's gone in there to the full forward line in beside Kean Dunn and Mossy Quinn. As this ball comes back out here towards Sean McCarthy. McCarthy, let's fly. And that's another one that's gone wide. I think three wides now this afternoon for Rahini. Yeah, and there was a shout that he picked it off the ground. They're just struggling. We mentioned maybe in the first half that Vincent's were struggling up front in terms of the, what they were creating. Seems to be easier to play with the breeze blown into your face rather than behind you in this first 10 minutes of the second half, certainly. Bit of space here now for Craig Wilson to attack. He looks inside to see if there's any run from either Dunn or O'Brien. McKeon Dunn is now motored over to the left-hand side. And now he'll move back in again. Martin looking for O'Brien. Good tussle in there between O'Brien and McNamara. Glenn McNamara should get this one, and he does. Great and work by Glenn McNamara. It was a 50-50, backed himself, managed to bring it away. Important turnover for Aheny. Hodison Real with the hand pass towards Fenton. Takes the shoulder there from Josh Kelly and comes back towards Talty. He's again talking to the referee, saying... Every time he gets, and in fairness to him, every time he does get the ball, he's getting hits, he's getting late digs. But on they go. It's a good run from Ivers, and it's a good ball inside. Well blocked. And Burke will just tidy things up at the back there for St. Vincent's, and that's a lovely out ball to Lamb. Great block by Wilson. That's him on the ball now. Brilliant pressure. He's got Lamb moving inside, but he'll come back. Craig Wilson to Burke. He's got Kelly beside him. Instead, he'll put that ball into space. Here comes Jimmy McCusker. Sean Lowry, two points to his name already. Takes them on. Lowry with the right. Is that going to curl in? It hits the post. Still in play. Glenn McNamara quickest to react and does well to find Ruddison Real. James O'Kane. First touch since uh, coming on there a couple of moments ago. Again, just, I mean, in fairness to the referee, the players aren't helping him either, Coleman. There's just a lot of niggly fouls like that that is just making the game so stop-start. Yeah, and there's, there's a lot of the contact are fouls that he hasn't given, and I can understand the frustration from, certainly Brian Fenton's point of view, that a lot of the contact are fouls that the referee isn't given, and therefore it's leading to an extra bit of a hand being left on or a later hit coming after that. Kian Ivers having to work extra hard for that space in front of Burke, but does so. Talty thought about the hand pass instead, drove forward himself, and Talty hits that, hits the post. It goes over the bar. An excellent score there from Brian Talty, the midfielder from Rahini. And uh, it's just really important to stop the momentum from Vincent's. Yeah, well, 10 minutes from their opening score of the half, so it was important that they got another one on the board. It looked initially like he was looking for a pass. He then decided to back himself, did well to knock it over the bar. Just puts it out again. You know, two scores apiece. 12, 13 minutes played in the second half. So it's a war of attrition here. It's going to come down to the narrowest of margins. Mistakes can't be afforded. So it's really important you get your kick out right and secure possession. And when you create a chance, you get something from it. Well, when, they took, uh, when they played against each other in the league way back in April, it was nine scores to eight. Two seven to Vincent's, two six to Rahini. As we see another substitute now for Rahini. I think Liam Fahey has uh, left the pitch and we'll uh, see who has come on. As we see extra pressure here on Andy Smith, the goalkeeper from St. Vincent's, but he gets away with it. Yeah, fouled, his arm was pulled back, but again, good pressure from Rahini. 
trying to engage early, trying to make Vincent do something with the ball. Burke. Bit of space now here on the far side. Craig Wilson, who has been very prominent in this second half in terms of his defensive duties, but also just motoring forward and giving that option along the right-hand side. McNamara cuts that one out and again, despite the best efforts of Sean McCarthy there, ball goes out over the sideline and it'll be a line ball to Vincent's. Yeah, Gavin Burke was looking for Dunn inside. He made a couple of runs, but a great foot across prevented the pass from making it inside to him. Really well done there by Lowry. Just shielded the ball for himself. Used all every uh, inch of his body just to kind of get himself between his player and the ball. Worked it along the end line, but just weren't able to capitalise on it afterwards. And another turnover there, but the referee is going to come back here for the advantage. Yeah, they're so deep, Rahini, in terms of their defensive effort, that when they break out, they don't have a huge amount of options up front. So another bit of back chat going to bring the free up. Rob Henley could have a cut off this. I know it's 65 out, but he might decide to have a look at it. Well, he was going to leave it, but now he has come up. And uh, Brian Fenton sent him to go back, but uh, Rob Henley is saying... No, I think I have this, Brian. And after coming all the way up, he has to run all the way back. Won't thank him for that one. No, definitely <laughs> not. <laughs> James O'Kane. Lovely little show and go. Minus to get that one back there towards Paddy Reed, And in around the area. And again, just smartly done by Andy Smith. Just taking no chances. Nice little uh, acknowledgement from his centre back. Derek Cummins there just saying, well done, Andy. Well played. But well, Rahini back in the mix again. 15 minutes to go here this afternoon in the fourth quarter final in the go-ahead Dublin Senior Football Championship as Brian Talty opens it up and strikes another one over the bar. That's two in a row now for the midfielder. And it just stretches Rahini that little bit further ahead. Yeah, brilliant score again. Fenton involved in the move. Anytime he's involved, something happens for Rahini. Took a lovely little sidestep to get inside. Freed up his midfield partner, Talty, who adds a second score. Lowry again doing well in front of Fenton. Gets the pass away here towards Josh Kelly. And poor ball there towards Tomas Quinn. And Ben McHugh. Grateful just to get the fist in there. As any good cornerback will, just making life difficult for his opposite number. Halty with a little one two to McNamara. Slips past Lowry. Simple ball is the call to Sean Grenham. And he gets it back after a nice little one two. James O'Kane takes on Lamb. He's still going strong. He gives that pass now to Fenton. This could work out here for Rudderson Reel. Goes down on it. Tries to gather it wide, says the umpire. Referee agrees. And on we go. Oh, and lucky from Rahini, tried to do all the right things there. Keep it simple, move the ball through the hands. Real made the uh, inside run. He was unlucky not to pick up the pass. But a better movement from Rahini up front to try and create the opportunity. They're dominating at possession at the moment. So this chance has been created. Another couple of scores makes it virtually impossible for Vincent's if they can eke out. Make it three, make it four, because Vincent's are struggling up front in terms of the scores that they're trying to generate. Rahini substitutes. Adam McAweeney is on. Where's number 13? And he's replacing Sean McCarthy. McCarthy, who gave away that sloppy pass in the first half and then conceded the penalty straight after it. And that's a big win from Dara Cummins there. Again, a bit of back chat sees the <laughs> ball brought up. 12 minutes to go here in Parnell Park. Burke. From St. Vincent's, used the outside of the right peg to put this one in towards Dunn. Dunn gathers it out in front of Davis Shatwell. Sean Lamb tries to angle that in, and Lowry had slipped in behind Glenn McNamara there, and that's the pass that Lamb was trying to give, but in the end just wasn't accurate enough. Now first possession since coming on for Adam McAweeney, and it's a foul. Henley's already on his way here, Marcus, so he might fancy a cut off for himself. 
Yeah, Brian Fenton hasn't even bothered looking at him this time now. He does now, but he's happy enough with his decision. Yeah, just Lowry, like, you know, when you're looking for that pass in over the defender's head, it's, it's you know, it's a 20% it's a one. You need to get out in front. You need to give him an option on the ball. I think where Vincent's are struggling at the moment, there's not enough pace coming on the shoulder that's breaking that initial line. So they're having to go back or go sideways. They just can't penetrate that defensive cordon that Rahini have on at the minute. It's not that Rahini are doing anything special. It's maybe just not the same work rate is there that was there in the first half. You're playing into that breeze. It can eat into you a bit. Henley has a go. Oh, he has a go, and some. That's a brilliant score from Rob Henley. I make it four points for Rob Henley, Coleman. I mean, like, what an asset to have in your arsenal. Yeah, well, when scores are at a premium that you can bank on someone to get your four from plays balls like that is a big, big, uh, huge for the team. Four scores. And no gimmies. No, like, they're no. all difficult kicks. No, all long-range scores, but, you know, you take him out of the equation and those balls are falling short. Brilliant score. Free goes Rahini's way. Really chance for them to drive a nail into the coffin here, Vincent. Sean Grenham looks up, surveys the options in front of him. Ian Ivers is in there, so is Ruddison Real. Instead, they'll work their way back towards Talty, who's two points to his name. Fenton, his midfield partner, scored a glorious point in the first half off his left. James O'Kane just loses possession there, and that is a really good win there. Fairness to Dara coming centre back for Vincent. I think he got the near hand in there. Yeah, he's been very good. He's shown for kick outs. He's been very good defensively. Okay, and thought he was going to burn it for pace, but coming stuck with him, got the hand in, knocked it away, manages a turnover. It's a big turnover. But Vincent's are hanging on. Here comes Shane O'Leary, the hero of the last day, at that match winning score. And Tomas Quinn does really well and definitely attracts the foul there. Give knock in the back, and down he goes, and the referee's notebook is out again. Yeah, well, you just see the difference when shown out in front, you're giving the option to the player on the ball, so the one over the top is asking a big question of the, the, the man in possession. Quinn shows in front, wins the ball, and suddenly he turned it into the back. Free awarded, and it's a big free. Dunn has been successful with one in this second half. Looks like he's going to go out of his hands for this one, but needed. 39th minute since Vincent's managed to put Anton on the scoreboard. Can Dunn add one now? 52 minutes on the clock. Himself and Tomas Quinn had a quick chat before he took it. And, uh, well, again, he's a young man with plenty of confidence. But he just never struck that one with the power and accuracy that he would have liked. Great drive here from Sean McMahon. Pass then towards James O'Kane, who manages to stay on his feet. And pass across to Lunny. Alti. Jane Talti. Darren Byrne. McNamara. And again, the call coming from the Rahini bench is just keep it simple, keep it simple. They've got three-point cushion now over St. Vincent's as Brian Fenton drives forward. He's over on the right-hand side. He hits that with the right. And that one has gone to the left and wide. The fifth wide of the afternoon for Rahini. Yeah, I just wonder if he'd come back on his left side that time. He might have just narrowed the angle for himself. A ah, great kick out from Andy Smith. Brilliant take. Well Excellent. taken by Wilson. Here comes Lowry. Lowry has a bit of pace now, and there's nobody next to near him. Talty is asking for others to come towards him. Here he comes, and he strikes that over the bar. And he's furious with himself. He knows he should have kept that low. But in fair, what a take from the kick out by Wilson, who gave it to Lowry, and Lowry did the rest. Yeah, brilliant kick out. Lay teed it up. Once he popped it up, allowed Lowry to run through. There was no one really able to get to him. A couple of guys cut across him. Half chance goal, knocks it over the bar, narrows the gap down to two. The big 10 minutes here, there'll be at least three minutes injury time. So there's a big 10 minutes here for, for Vincent. Again, you think of the small margins. Rahini, Brian Fenton turns in on his left. Does it make the scoring chance a little bit easier? Oh, gets away with one. Nice pace from Rahini to bring the ball out from the back. McHugh 
to James O'Kane, who's been very lively since he came in, but just not the best pass from McHugh in the end. And Vincent's now keen to get on with it. Every free being taken that little bit quicker than the previous. Into the last six minutes or so, again, as Coleman said, we'll definitely have a minute or two for added time. Looks like Brian Bulger has come on there as well for St. Vincent's. O'Brien. Burke. Slips but gets up quickly. Dara Cummins drives forward. Grenham tries to stop him, doesn't succeed. Instead, it's Cummins who drives that off the left, and that's a wonderful score from Dara Cummins. We were talking about his efficiency as a defender earlier, Coleman, but that's what he can do in terms of his offensive abilities great score yeah brilliant leadership there took it on he, he probably dodged one there in terms of the steps he took before he managed to get the score away he got caught earlier i'd have argued that he took more steps in that move than the one previous backed himself on his left side and knocks it over the bar and from being adrift three points have not scored since the 39th minute two and two minutes leaves them just one point off this rohini team yeah rohini just haven't been able to shake vincent's at all today As we enter the last five minutes here now in Donny Kearney. Just interesting to see what Rahini do, what answer they will find to those two scores from Sean Lowry and Dara Cummins. Brian Talty drives forward, looks to put an angle ball in towards Ivers. Ivers just manages to control it with his left hand and then a lovely pick up with the right foot. Back here and a foul there, was there? And the whistle eventually sounds, and a foul there on Paddy Reid. Yeah, it was in acres of space. Paddy Reid just went to burst through the gap and lost his footing because of the tackle that came his way. You know, it's, it's a, I won't call it a banker, but it's certainly a very scorable free from a Rahini point of view, but a brilliant pass inside from Talty that allowed Ivers the space. The pass was possibly on a couple of seconds earlier, managed to hold it. Ivers managed to win it. Well, an opportunity here now for Darren Lunny. Two in the first half, one in the second. Well, this to make it four points for himself and just increase that lead to two points. He settles himself and Lunny then with the left and uh, puts that between the posts. Nicely done by Darren Lunny. Yeah, it's an important score. Vincent's are after rattling off two on the spin there. They're down to one. Rohini have showed it. Great bit of belief in what they were trying to achieve there with the ball inside to Ivers to give Patrick Reed the score an opportunity. Rahini now squeezing the Vincent's kick out. Big possession here would allow them an opportunity. And Jack Fagan is after coming on for Rahini as well in place of Brian Talty, who's given every ounce of energy he could possibly muster out there today. A couple of really good scores. Here comes O'Kane. Puts that one out towards the substitute. And then it's popped back, and that's a lovely score from Sean Grenham. Immediate impact from the substitute, Jack Fagan there. Pops it to Sean Grenham, and just nicely floated over the bar. Yeah, two in a minute for Rahini. Brilliant press on the Vincent's kick out. Allows them to turn them back on their heels. Good kick out again from Andy Smith to get Vincent's away. Pressure there. Holds on to it. Gap is back to three again. And Josh Kelly just slipped at the wrong moment there. So Fenton can drive forward. Here he comes again. Still goes, pulled to the ground. And possibly on his way down already. And because of the extra little bit of back chat from Shane O'Leary there. Well, if the last one was a gimme, this one's even handier for, I'd imagine, Darren Lunny. Yeah, I think Fenton was probably under pressure in terms of steps. If they just stayed off him a little bit, they might have got the, the decision off Gary McCormack. But now makes it an opportunity for Haney to push it out to four. And it's a long way back from four because you need at least two and one of those being a goal to try and get back on level Peggins. Lunny, chance for his fifth. Darren Lunny makes no mistakes. Two minutes to go. That gap is now gone to four. That's a brilliant piece of pressure from Haney over the last two minutes there. They've responded to... Vincent's two unanswered scores with three of their own. So 1-7 to 12. Or 1-7 to 11. And now they've pushed it out to a four-point gap. Is the response on this Vincent's team. And 
another substitute on there for Rahini. Uh, looks, it's Colin Hare who's after coming on. And uh, is it Sean McMahon who's gone off? It isn't. But uh, we'll stay with the play here and see how it develops. Vincent's need at least a score. A point here would bring it down to a goal. And again, Tomás Quinn looks towards Kean Dunn and says, throw this over the bar. Has to drop this one over, needs to cut it to the goal and then give Vincent a chance of creating something up front. It'll give them an opportunity to squeeze Rob Henley's kick out. Henley can go long, we know that, and he'll probably drive it out to the middle of the field and bank on maybe Fenton collecting. But Dunn has to hit this one first. And he's hit it, and we're back down to three. <laughs> 60 minutes on the watch, squeeze on the kick out. Where's Henley looking to go with it? That is really well done from Rob Henley there, just to find Fenton. Fenton started out r wide right, and then just just moved into the center and then just pinpoint accuracy then from the goalkeeper. Well, it was the right decision. Go along with the pass and bank on Brian Fenton collecting it for you and that's what they did. You don't want to go short. You're up by three. You just need to retain possession or if you lose it, have it as far away from goal as you possibly can. Well, we've three results in the senior two quarterfinals as well and uh, the latest from Clontarf and St. Bridget's at Clontarf are 13 points. Bridget's seven points. So a uh, six-point cushion there for Clontarf and similar enough time gone in that game as well so after this game we will have the semi-final draw for the senior two and the senior one championship in the go-ahead Dublin senior football championships and he just played in the wrong area at the moment back they go again towards Rob Henley oh. and that grimace was Coleman Goggins Henley and did uh, well there. It was great pressure from Vincent. Managed to pick out his centre forward there, James O'Kane, who's been very good since coming in. Caught on the heel there. He definitely felt that win. one. Not sure if we heard five minutes, maybe. Someone shouted there in terms of additional time. It does look like it's uh, an ankle injury for James O'Kane there, but looks like all will be well again. And uh, Hudson Real just lost possession there and <laughs> took a bit of a bang for his troubles. He did. Brian Fenton took off running, thinking the free had gone the other direction. He wasn't too pleased, but it's landed in his lap. Dunn will go into the book, all eaten into valuable seconds and time on the clock. Yellow card for Kean Dunn. Brian Fenton with possession. And we'll look to take this free and we'll certainly look to retain possession for Rahini. There can't be much time left here at the end of this game. 1-8 to Vincent's, 14 points for Rahini. Brian Fenton directing traffic there. He has obviously something up his sleeve. He's been telling people to go left, to go right, to get out of space. And in the end, he does well to find key. Uh, Sean McMahon, excuse me. Ian Ivers broke right and McMahon then came short. Okay, good to see that injury from earlier not uh, impacting him too much. Good impact off the bench as well for the substitutes for Rahini. Brian Fenton. Kean Dunn. In close proximity. Great leadership from Brian Fenton over the last couple of minutes. He's been on every ball, every freeze, telling them that we need to hold on to it. He shouted for it back a couple of times. Well taken. Nicely done by Ivers. Sean Grenham back to Kean Ivers. Jimmy McCusker really well back there helping out his defence. It's now and ever for Vincent. They need a big score. Three-point game. And again, this is just eating away at the clock. And Gary McCormick just wants them to take it from the same spot and wants to put, I think it's Sean Grenham's name into the book. But 
helps Rahini's cause, doesn't help no, Vincent's yeah, much. Yeah, absolutely. Like, look, if you look, this, if you can get a pan of the field there, like, everyone is inside their own 65 metre line. So they'll allow Vincent to have the ball in front of them. They're just not going to allow it to come in behind. Well, it's uh, Rahini who'll be down to 14 men for the last couple of moments. Sean Grennan with a black card there. Dara Cummins, inspirational centre back. Brilliant point. Oh, me. 10 minutes or so ago for St. Vincent's. Here's Keen Dunn. Nah, he was fouled. His jersey was being pulled. David Shatwell knew what he was trying to do. Didn't want Dunn to gain any bit of momentum. This has to go in around the house. There's no point knocking it over the bar. They're checking with time with Gary McCormick, but 64 on the clock. I heard a shout for five minutes additional time. I think it's going to go in around the square and hope for a break. Bill Costlow. Another substitute on for St. Vincent's. I see him there with the number 20 on his back as Keen Dunn floats this in, and that's Ben McHugh. Safe as houses back there, and Ben McHugh wins that, boots it into the stands, and Rahini are through to the last four of the go-ahead Dublin Senior Football Championships of a scoreline of 14 points to 1-8. Coleman Goggins, just your general assessment of that second-half performance, of, I suppose, the general performance from Rahini. Yeah, I think that the foundations were laid in the first half. I think they, they really got into Vincent's early on. I know Vincent's got a goal through the penalty, but they were struggling really to connect up front. And in comparison, Rahini were able to call on Rob Henley to knock over three frees in that opening half. I think second half with the wind behind them, they probably made harder work of it than they needed to have. They had opportunities. They were three points up at a stage with about 10 minutes left to play and allowed Vincent's back into the game again, but then dominated. They were very dominant around possession. Got the last, you know, the three scores before a free from Dunn that narrowed it back to the three points, but fully deserved of their victory. Great leadership from Brian Fenton throughout the game. And I mentioned at times he can sit back and maybe dictate but during the game, he drove through, created space, particularly in those last couple of minutes, made sure Rahini held on to the ball. Huge achievement for them. They're into a Dublin Championship semi-final. You know, they've been a while trying to break through to get to that stage of the competition. And while there's a draw to follow here in terms of who their opposition will be, they've given themselves an opportunity with that result. And while Vincent certainly aren't the Vincents of old, it's a big result for Rahini, and they move into a semi-final with huge optimism. OK, well, Coleman, as I mentioned earlier, is my gla glamorous assistant for this afternoon. He has to get ready for the draw. So while he gets over and gets ready for the draw for both the Senior 2 and the Senior 1 semi-final uh, championship, uh, we'll go through the highlights of that second half. Well, as, we, as Coleman mentioned earlier, it was a great start to the second half from Rahini. And that man, Darren Lunny, their full forward, he really was. Anytime he got the ball, you could see the, the fear in the Vincent faces because he was really, really confident in everything he did out there. Again, a high challenge from Talty on Lamb. And that gave the opportunity to Kean Dunn. Again, he hit a brilliant one in the first half from play. And that was one he got in the second half from place ball. Vincent's, of course, managed to add to that shortly afterwards. Huge ball. Again, it just showed the strength of that breeze in that second half. Have it just got stronger and stronger. That was the effort from Josh Kelly, which was well saved in the end by Rob Henley. And again, we'll have to mention Rob Henley and his performances from place balls. Here's that score from Sean Lowry after 38 minutes, which put them level. And that was his second score of the afternoon. Eight points to 1-5. And then it became the Brian Talty show. There's an excellent score on 42. And he did the same trick again four minutes later. Just found himself in a little bit of room, steadied himself with the hop, and then did the rest with the right peg. And what a performance from the Rahini goalkeeper, Rob Henley. Three points in the first half. And this was his fourth of the afternoon. Into the breeze, or with the breeze at his back, he was brilliantly accurate. To be fair to Vincent, they didn't go down without, without a fight. What a kick out that was to find Wilson, who found Lowry, and Lowry did the rest. Half a chance for a goal here, as Coleman alluded to. But to be fair to him, between... Uh, between Darren Byrne and Glenn McNamara, they were making their way across from Rahini and probably narrowing the angle. That was the score, a brilliant score at that from Dara Cummins. And that put it 1-7 to 11. And then it was back to Rahini. We asked the question, what response would they have? Well, they had that free from Lunny. 
And then it was about this score, lovely score from Sean Grenham, 26 on his back, but started this afternoon. And then the last score of the afternoon for Rahini, their 14th point of the afternoon was Darren Lunny's. And despite the best efforts of Vincent's in the last four or five minutes of injury time, this is the most they could come up with. That free from Kean Dunn on 59 minutes. And that leaves the final score of 14 points to Rahini, 1 8 to Vincent's. And it's Rahini that joined Croaks, Ballyboden, and indeed Jude's in the last four of the Dublin Senior One Championship. Now we're going to go straight into the draw and, and I mentioned earlier we're going to start off with the draw for the uh, Go Ahead Dublin Senior Championship, uh, Senior Championship 2 Championship, excuse me, and the results from yesterday, Fingallians came on top against St. Pat's Donna Bate, unlucky there, Coleman's uh, club. Um, we had a win then as well for Nave Barogue against Round Towers of Lusk. We had a win for Nave Olaf against Round Towers and just this afternoon we had a win as well for Clontarf against St. Bridget. So, Coleman, if you wouldn't mind, Senior 2 Championship, give the four names a good old mix up there and let's draw out the first name. It's an open draw, by the way, so um, first out of the hat, or out of the cup, I should say, is Nave Olaf. So Nave Olaf will play. And this is the Senior 2 Championship draw. We'll play against Fingallians. And the second semi-final in the Senior 2 Championship We'll see Clontarf. And just to finish it out there, please, Coleman, if you wouldn't mind, they'll play Nave Barog. So there you have the draw in the Senior 2 Championship. It's Nave Olaf against St. Fingallians, and it's Clontarf against Nave Barog. Thanks a million for that, Coleman. And uh, we'll just wait for Coleman to throw the four slips of paper and to give them a good shake for the Go Ahead Dublin Senior 1 Championship draw. The semi finals, please, Coleman in that and uh, again Croaks, Ballyboden, St. Jude's and Rohini are the four clubs. First out of the cup is Kilmacud Croaks, the reigning champions going for three in a row and Kilmacud Croaks will face Rohini, today's uh, winners here in the game that's just after finishing behind us. Croaks against Rohini and in the other semi-final it will be St. Jude's and just to finish out the draw there please Coleman and Ballyboden St. Enders. Well, there is the draw in the Senior 1 and Senior 2 Championship, the go-ahead Dublin Senior Football Championship. Thanks a million, Coleman, for that. And Coleman, if I can ask you to come back over to here and we'll just get your reaction to that Senior 1 and Senior 2 draw, please. Coleman, we'll start off with the Senior 2 draw, if you don't mind, and uh, I suppose Neavola, Fingallians, uh, and Clontarf, Nev Baroque. Yeah, I interesting draw, I suppose, from a Pats of Donna Bate. It was disappointing that they lost out to Fingallians yesterday, but a great performance to get a result from Fingallians so that they'll have you know great uh, impetus going into the game. Clontarf maybe are favourites when you look at maybe what they have in terms of the personnel and their, their experience, but Olives, again, great to have the likes of Davy Byrne who's involved there and then Barogues behind that as well. So really interesting last four. Very difficult to call who'll come out of it, but should be an interesting set of matches for the Senior Championship too, certainly. And then we move on to the Go Ahead Dublin Senior 1 Championship semi-final draw. Um, I suppose, look, getting straight into it, defending champions, Kilmacud Croaks against Rahini. You can be sure that some of the Croaks management and coaches uh, would have been there today uh, looking on. Um, what, do you, what do you make of that? And then obviously Jude's against Ballyboden. Well, I can't imagine there'd be too many buying me a drink in Rohini Clubhouse after that draw. But look, Kilmacud Croaks are the team to be beaten, I suppose, if you're going to win the Dublin Senior Championship. They're the reigning champions, the reigning All-Ireland champions. So if you're going to win one, you're going to have to beat them at some stage, be it semi-final or final. Rohini have shown that they've, they've enough quality and they're capable. You mentioned the impact they had from the bench. So they certainly can go into the game with a lot of confidence albeit that Kilmacud Croaks will certainly go into the game as favourites. And then in the second game, you know, Ballyboden St. End is probably in, in my pecking order, will probably sit second in terms of the Dublin Senior Championship. But St. Jude's are so hard to beat. They know how to win championship matches. They demonstrated again today that even when they look like they might get over the line, they can find a way of doing it. So I think what you've set up is two very interesting semi-finals. Three from the south side, Rohini flying the flag for the north side. 
So look, be interesting to see how it plays out in a couple of weeks' time, but really interesting semi-final draws across the two championships. Well, those games will be played on the weekend of October 7th and 8th. Keep an eye on DublinGA.ie uh, for ticket details and indeed details of Dubs TV coverage uh, across that weekend. Uh, we're back again next weekend uh, with hurling action, and it's hurling action uh, in the Senior 2 Championship. Um, but uh, for now, from myself and Coleman Goggins and indeed all the team here this afternoon from the four quarterfinals across both days. Thanks a million for being with us. We'll chat to you again soon. Slán Tamil.